All right, guys, I have a new vlog slash list video of sorts coming your way right now because Patreon supporter Evan requested a little bit of a house tour. And I love every little piece of movie and TV memorabilia I have in this apartment. So it could have taken a very, very long time. So instead, I'm going to probably give you future videos on this topic. And this time I'm going to isolate it to one specific collection that might be my favorite collection in the entire apartment. And it's my Mondo collection. I'll never forget the first time I saw their alt art for some great movies out there. And I just love the designs. I became such an admirer of so many of those artists. So I got really into collecting them to the point that when I catch these posters out and about, I just get very excited. Like last night, I was catching up on season two of Barry and I caught the Tyler Stout Attack the Block poster. And I'm like, wow, now I got to go on eBay and find it. But I need to draw the line somewhere. And Attack the Block is one of my favorite movies out there. And I do love that design. But one thing that I always say to myself before buying a Mondo poster is one, is it for a movie you absolutely love? And two, do you absolutely love this particular design for it? Because a lot of times Mondo does a whole bunch of different variations for a single movie. So pretty much every poster on this list ticks both boxes. There's one that comes to mind that was a gift that might not, but I still love the poster so, so much. It's a beautiful design. Jumping into it, Let's take a little tour here. Going down the line here, this first one is a poster for the birds and it's done by Adam Simpson. And this is one of those examples where Mondo released a whole bunch of versions of posters for the birds. And I just picked the one that I like the design the best. And that's how I ended up with this one. And you're gonna notice with all of these posters, I have gotten into the habit of getting them professionally framed again. This is one of my favorite collections that I have here. So I want to take good care of them. And I also, I just love the color palettes in a lot of these posters. And if you select the right frame and the right color frame, it just makes the art pop even more. And I think that's the case with this birds poster. This next one here is the jock design for the thing. I love that I have this so close to the entrance of my apartment because it always catches eyes when people first walk in. Now this next one here is my Game of Thrones poster and it was done by Vanya Zorovlyov. This was actually the second Mondo poster I ever got. And this one taught me a very important lesson when it comes to traveling and going to conventions and picking up pieces of art. The big rule is you do not buy that piece of art without having a proper poster tube to put it in. I remember standing in line at the Mondo booth for a very, very long time to buy this poster. And then I had to walk through the entire crowded convention center like this so that people wouldn't smash my poster because I didn't have a tube to put it in yet. Thankfully, it made it home safe and sound. And here it is to this day, continuing down this line. Now we have one of my favorite posters in my entire collection. No surprise here. It's a poster for Jurassic Park. This one comes from Stan and Vince. And again, this was another series that Mondo worked on where there were a whole bunch of options. And yes, I wanted many of them, but I made myself pick just one. And it's from one of my favorite scenes of the entire film. There's a little bit of a variation on what actually happens in the movie here to get all the characters together. But I love the little details here, like the flare and all that kind of stuff. So this right here is one of my favorite. This next one now is a smaller design that I picked up at South by Southwest one year. This is a Godzilla poster from Phantom City Creative. And this one, when I believe it might have been 2014 or 2013, it was right before Gareth Edwards Godzilla movie came out. And they did a little event at South by Southwest where they screened some footage from the film. And I think they screened the original Godzilla movie too that year. And they handed out these posters. And this was another instance where I went on a trip and had a very difficult time getting a poster home. But this one was worth the fight. I love this design. I love the colors in this one. And especially, again, custom frame. Love the way this one looks. All right, moving to the two big ones now that are positioned behind the couch in all their glory. This one actually is not a Mondo, and it's the only non-Mondo poster I'm going to show you in the collection today, even though there are more. But I have to point it out because it's one of my favorite pieces that I have hanging up, and it's for the movie Trick or Treat. It was actually a gift that someone gave to me because they knew how much I love Trick or Treat. At the time that this poster was issued, I was not living in LA, so I couldn't get my hands on it, and this friend was kind 
kind enough to send it my way. It's an Odd City poster that was done by James Fosdyke. And Trick or Treat, you guys know, it's one of my favorite movies out there. I used to adore the FearNet 24-hour marathon they used to do on Halloween. And this poster just beautifully captures so many key moments of that movie. It's funny that I'm bringing up this poster after Godzilla, considering Mike Dougherty's directing the new Godzilla movie. So I don't know, maybe it was all meant to be. Sliding over to this next one here, this is my poster that I have of the Babadook. And this one was done by Gary Pullen. Again, there were a couple of options. This is the one that I chose. I just love the way that it kind of reflects that the Babadook is in all of us. And I just will never forget the first time I saw the design for the Babadook, the movie itself. I just love the design of that creature and I think it pops really nicely in this poster too. Moving on to my next one here. This is a poster I got on an Oscar night. And this is actually my very first Mondo poster you're looking at right now. It's the Bridesmaids design done by Dave Perillo. The way that I got my hands on my first Mondo poster is I feel like the urgency is isn't quite the same today, but a while ago when Mondo used to release a poster, it was like a mad dash to click the buy button and get it in your cart before it was sold out. And on Oscar night, the year that Bridesmaids was nominated, what they did was they had a whole bunch of designs done for nominees that were queued up. And as those categories came up, they would go online in an instant. So I was sitting in a whole room of friends who were socializing and having fun. And there I am sitting on my computer, just going nuts every single time a Mondo poster came up. And thankfully, I wound up landing one of the ones that I really wanted more so than any of the others. And it's this Bridesmaids design. And it's probably one of few I have that isn't super dark and dour. So I just love how vibrant it is and you know it adds an interesting color palette to my apartment as well. Next up here, this is my Nightmare Before Christmas poster from Graham Irwin and this right here is one of my favorite movies of all time. I was full out obsessed with it as a kid. I'll never forget making my parents, making my grandparents take me to the theater to see it over and over. I had all the toys. I had the sheet music for the piano which I could not play whatsoever. Love, love, love that movie and this design in particular came from another South by Southwest trip, and it was actually my first time visiting the Mondo Gallery in Austin ever. And this is the design I walked away with, and I couldn't be happier with it. We've got one more to highlight here, and this one is my Crimson Peak poster done by Daniel Danger. Another gift right here, actually from the same person who gave me that trick-or-treat design, and it's beautiful. You guys know how I feel about Guillermo del Toro's work, so to have one of his movies represent presented on my wall really does mean a lot to me. And also look at the details. So with Crimson Peak, I was lucky enough to get to visit the set of the film and we got to go into the house and it was a fully realized three-story house. That's still to this day, one of my favorite set visit trips that I ever went on. So when I saw this design and saw how it represented that particular set, I really needed to have it. And then thankfully someone actually had one for me. And I am so grateful that they gave it to me because yet again, another design that I'm proud to hang on my wall. That's it guys, thank you so much for taking a tour of my mini Mondo gallery here. Just ignore this, this is par for the course. I'm really excited that I get to share something I love so much with you guys. So you know what, if you have any Mondo posters that you really love or any art in general, because I'm also a big fan of Gallery 1988, Bottleneck Gallery in Brooklyn. There are so many wonderful artists working out there creating variations on TVs and movies that we love so much. So if you've got anything you want to share, put it in the comment section below. I'd love to see it. I'd love to hear about it. Get on that, guys. Evan, another thank you to you for suggesting that I make this video. It was a good time. Don't forget to like and share this video, and I will see you soon with even more movie coverage.